this is the 3 amp demonstration vehicle. It's a it's a free resource. The idea of it is that we can bring it to the site and we can promote safe working with all the rest of it. Um, so we can give you details if it's interesting to you, how you can uh, make an application to ask to visit you on site. Okay, so um, as we're talking there, we talked about you know what we need to do when working at night and the hierarchy of measures. Obviously, right at the top there, we've got to think, can we avoid working at night in the first place? Can we pre-assemble things on the ground? Can we move control panels? Can we design and plan things so we can avoid the working at night? Very often across all industries, that's not easy really practical to do. We've got to get people up there. So then we're going to look at the safest way of people working at night. And as we saw from our friends there, the next level is collective fall prevention. So we're looking at guardrails, we look at scaffolds, we look at nukes, things like that where we're providing a safe place to work by the very nature that we're enclosing people in a guardrail system, um, a scaffold coming through. As we come down the hierarchy, then the next thing we've got to consider is still protect people, stop people from falling. But can we do it by putting people in a system called work restraint? And what essentially we're doing here essentially we're doing here is attaching the worker back to an anchor point with a lanyard, it could be fixed length or it could be adjustable, so that it prevents them, and that's the important thing, it actually prevents them from falling. So if I had an anchor point here and I touch my, my lanyard, then that's got to be of a length that it actually stops me. So if this is my edge here, it prevents me from falling. Personal form or personal work strength systems. Okay. Like I said, quite simple types of lanyards and it can be adjustable, it could be fixed length. But time and time again, what we see is that people setting up the strength systems and they believe they're in a strength system, but in fact, there is a chance or there is a, a risk of them falling. What we're going to demonstrate now is what the consequences of that situation would be. The consequences of someone falling on a one metre static line like this. So what we have in our demonstration vehicle, we have a 100 kilogram weight. We have a system where we can, we can raise the load and we can drop the load onto the line. So, the anchor point in here, a one metre lanyard attached to the weight. And the system here now will raise it up. So 100 kilogram is the standard uh, European DM test for wall protection equipment. So what we're going to do here is drop that 100 kilogram load. We're going to drop it on this one metre lanyard. Obviously, as we release it, it's going to accelerate. It's going to accelerate the uh, force of gravity towards the ground. When it hits the end of the lanyard, there's going to be force there. Okay, because you've got an accelerated mass. So. Raise it a bit on the uh, on the uh, put it up a bit. So on the winch. Yeah. Okay, let's cancel it again, please. So what we're going to do now is drop this load, and we're going to measure the forces on the play on the anchor. Okay, 100 kilograms, dropping one meter. Would then we like to uh, guess at how much force we're going to see there. We all agree it's going to be more, yeah, maybe several times more. Okay, 
jumped up and down the whole rug, the whole big shop. If you look at the force on the back there, that's in kilograms force. So that is 1,552 kilograms force. Nearly 1,600 kilograms force. 16 kilonewtons, or let's call it 1.6 tons. Yeah. Now we can see all the equipment's held together because it's made at a standard above that. The one thing that couldn't withstand those forces was your body. Okay? That much force on your body would cause serious internal injuries. And that's just falling that one, that length, that one meter. So you can see how important it is that we use the right equipment in the right situations. What we're going to do now is change this lanyard to the one of us lanyard and see what a difference that will make. Conventional single leg four less lanyard. This one's 1.75 meters long. Under the European standards, the maximum length the four less lanyard we're allowed to manufacture is two meters. So obviously, the longer the lanyard, the longer the potential free fall distance. The longer that free fall distance, the more speed, the more force it's going to be generated. The other thing that the uh, European standards specify is that any four or less equipment, any four or less equipment must limit the forces of the rest down to six kilonewtons or 600 kilograms force. Okay, so we're looking for quite a substantial uh, reduction in the forces we saw just falling one meter <laughs> on its static line. Just uh, that's the. Let's see what happens now. Hopefully what we're seeing is a more control of the rest of the weight, a lot less bouncing around, and a lot less force on the meter. Okay. First thing we can see 546 kilograms force. So below that 600. If I touch this webbing now, that is quite warm to the touch. So a lot of that energy is being converted into heat as this special double ply shock absorbing material rips apart. And it's this material ripping apart which slows you down. Because you're slowing down, you're not going to abrupt hold, then we're reducing the forces. And you may see a problem with this system in the work application, in the real world. Rescue. Rescue's one, yeah. The other one is, because we've introduced the shock absorber on what is already a one and a half metre, two metre lanyard, then we're increasing distance. Worst case scenario, we've got a two metre lanyard, okay, got a big guy on the end of this two metre lanyard, the shock absorber deploys the full length, which is 1.75 metres, and that's only to that point there on the harness. Then I've got the length of the body below me. Quite easily we can get up to six meters full clearance. In the construction industry, the maintenance industry, things like that, then very often we don't have that six plus meters full clearance from our anchor point. So now we've got another issue, we've got to 
keep the forces down below six in the kilograms, but also minimise the fall clearance. And there is where you can do that. We could substitute the standard lanyard for a self-attracting lanyard. And the beauty of these systems is, with this one that attaches onto the harness, the effective working length of the lanyard is always at the minimum length. So in a full situation, this locks off very quickly, okay, minimising the freefall distance, so minimising the forces. If we've minimised the forces, then the shock absorber is going to, isn't going to deploy much at all. In a real life situation, these lock off almost instantaneously. Okay. In practice, even with some shock absorber deployment, we're looking in the rest of the fall within 300 or 400 millimetres. So in construction sites, scaffolding and things like that, we find that these are becoming more and more popular. Bigger version, this is what we call an S, uh, SRL or self attracting lifeline. The idea is that we anchor this above the workplace, the worker attaches to it, and as he moves around, it retracts and pays out. It's exactly the same as the, the lanyard, the self attracting lanyard, in a full situation, it locks off almost instantaneously to get the best of the fall. below 600 kilograms force and the rest in the floor in the shortest possible distance. Okay. Look at the distance there between the hook and the rest and then we're talking about 400 millimetres. Okay. And again the forces are well below the 600 required European legislation. So again, we can, or the equipment is out there, to arrest the forces in the shortest possible distance, um, applying to the, uh, the European, or exceeding the European standard. So I mentioned over here, if we're putting people in full arrest, what we're basically doing is saying, yeah, we're putting people in a situation where they can't fall. Um, if someone falls, is a uh, force arrested by a lanyard or a self retracting landline? Great, the equipment's done its job. It's not the end of the problem. Has anybody heard of suspension intolerance? Basically, it's the pooling of the blow under gravity okay, down the bottom part of our body. When we're moving around, it's not a problem because uh, the veins in the legs run between the muscle groups. And as we move around, it stops the blood from pooling in our legs. If we stand perfectly still, then that will happen. The blood will start pooling in our legs. Because the blood's all going down here, unless it's going to our head, we get less oxygen to our brain. So if we stand perfectly still, that will happen. The blood will go down into our legs, we'll get less oxygenated blood going to our, our brain, and eventually the body has a safety mechanism and we'll faint. Fainting is just that, it's just a safety mechanism. As soon as we fainted, we horizontal. Our legs, our heart, our lungs, our head, all more or less on the same level. People who faint come around quite quickly. Now imagine that in a harness, where someone falls into a harness, suspended by a lanyard, okay, they can't move, then that will take effect. And they'll get to the effect where the person faints. The problem is, because you're hanging in a harness, you're still vertical. And that pooling of the blood carries on. The condition is known as suspension intolerance, it used to be called suspension trauma. It can be fatal, there are permanent cases where it's been fatal. So, what we've got to do, or what the working at height regulations require, 
So if you're people, if you're putting people working at height, then you make plans, you make provision for rescue. Rescues don't have to be too complex. It doesn't have to be too odious. It can be quite simple. This is a Sala R550. Rescue kit. Basically, just anchor it above the casualty. Connect the rescue line to the casualty. If you can't reach the casualty, then there's, a, there's pole systems and remote attachment systems. Or system where you can attach onto the lanyards. Okay. And then what we need to do then is transfer the weight from the system we've taken the ball and onto the rescue system. This has got a 10 to 1 pulley system in, 10 to 1 gearing mechanism. So I can quite easily. Transfer the weight onto the rescue. Take this off. Just set a lanyard to attach it to the top. Okay, he's now on my rescue. Board. I've got a choice now, depending where he is. Okay, if he's down, pulling down a hole, in some chamber, something like that, then I might want to bring him up. In which case, I can either carry on winding. That was 100 kilograms I was lifting there. Yeah. Or my hand, or I could put a cordless drill on the spindle here and uh, reach the person up. That's a system they use on the uh, offshore wind turbines now to get people up to the top for helicopter rescue. Or the other options would take him down. He's on a platform, base platform, whatever, to take him down to where paramedics, emergency services, and first aiders can get to him. Okay, a couple of features of this rescue device is. I say it's got the gearing system, so I now, now I'm holding 100 kilograms quite easily in one hand. Yep. If I wanted to lower the person down, I can do that quite easily. Okay. But if I need to get the person down um, and assisted, then what this system has is two counter rotating centrifugal brakes, which will regulate the descent speed of the rescue boat. 0.9 meters per second which is about a walking pace. So even if I let go of this rope now, you see that the weight will just glide down one, at more or less one meter per second to safety. So rescues don't have to be complicated things. But we need to be prepared, we need to be trained, we need to have the equipment. If we put particularly where we're putting people in for the rest situations. It's not acceptable by the um, HSC to just put in our rescue plan down 999. <coughs> we don't know what time or what response time for those are serving so We need to make the business. Okay, are there any questions about uh, anything you've seen or, or detection? <coughs> 